each May and June, most of us probably have birds nesting in our yard or somewhere in our close proximity, likely things like American robins or northern cardinals. Um, after they select a breeding site um, somewhere in our yard or outside of our office window or whatever, um, they build a nest, they lay about one egg per day, and then if everything goes well, they'll incubate those eggs for about two weeks. Um, after those eggs hatch, they'll then, um, both male and female, feed the young for uh, about a two-week period, and then they'll fledge out of the nest, leaving it empty. So during this entire month period, these birds are at risk of having their nest um, fail. Um, so sometimes, you know, not everything does go well. Um, in fact, most nest attempts fail, so at least two-thirds of nests probably fail for most species. Nest predators are often causing these failures, so causing them to fail um, prematurely. Um, if you think about the example with your backyard or any given habitat, there are lots of potential things out there that could be causing nests to fail. So this include things like raccoons and cats, and it can include things like um, crows and blue jays and lots of other things as well. Um, the big question becomes, how do we figure out what things are responsible for these failures? How do we find out what factors are associated with failures? And what is the significance um, of these, these uh, nest predator identities and, and these important factors? Um, there have been a lot of ways that people have tried to do this in the past, including focusing on the condition of the nest, so maybe some things are indicative of birds or mammals, or relying on opportunistic encounters where people say, oh, you know, I went to a nest and I saw a snake at it, so snakes must be very important. These things have been largely unsuccessful. Um, I mentioned robins and things like that, but there are about 200 species of birds that breed in the state, and they're undergoing the same type of risk throughout the breeding season. So it's important for a, a variety of different species. Um, and among these, about 25% of the species in the state could probably be listed as, as conservation priorities of one type or another. And nest predation is often a very important cause of population decline, so understanding more about it um, is an important thing. So the most natural um, way to think about doing this um, is using video technology. Unfortunately, in the past, the size and the cost of this technology hasn't always been conducive to covertly deploying at nest without causing failure or any type of, uh, of, of harm or unnatural conditions. Fortunately, in recent years, um, we've had things like um, small cameras become much more affordable, much more easily to deploy in the field. They have infrared diodes that allow us to see at night as well as in the daytime. Um, they rely on digital video recorders, which allow us to use less power and get more data. Um, we can deploy these things at nests um, in a very camouflaged manner without influencing the outcome um, of the nests. And then we can go back every few days to retrieve data and see how things are going and then potentially um, cycle to another um, nest. This type of technology has become very popular over the past 10 years for a variety of aspects of studying nesting ecology. Um, We've been putting these things at about 400 nests over the past couple of years, resulting in somewhere on the order of 100,000 hours of video data, um, 10 terabytes of data that we've collected. Most of the footage is pretty boring, such as this robin just sitting at the nest. But for a lot of these nests, something ends up happening, so something exciting ends up happening. In this particular case, what we end up seeing is an eastern screech owl comes along and it causes a failure um, just a day or two prior to when the nest probably would have fledged. So now we know um, in this case, a screech owl is responsible for this failure. Um, there are lots of other things that, that cause nest failures. So we document kind of some of the usual suspects that you might expect, things like raccoons and snakes and, and weasels, along with you know, owls that I mentioned and other raptors and other bird species like blue jays and things like that. Some of the species that we see um, aren't necessarily what you would expect to be nest predators. Um, things like squirrels, things like mice, things like deer. Um, cause a pretty decent number of failures depending on where you're at in the state. So aside from just documenting what the important nest predators are, this allows us to ask questions about what are the influence of things like landscape context on the predation risk at a nest um, due to these different types of predators. Um, we can also ask lots of other questions about what are the influences of, of habitat structure, um, time of year, nest height, other things like that. So, Lots of questions that are interesting, both from kind of a biological standpoint of just understanding how these natural systems work and, and how the nesting ecology of species work, but also understanding more about conservation implications and how we can recommend conservation managers might change what they're doing um, to improve population status of at-risk species. Thank you very much.